Hello everyone, welcome back to the Two Line Pass. Today we're going to talk about the newest Pittsburgh Penguin, Rucker McGrorty, who was acquired from Winnipeg for Braden Yeager. It was an exchange of 14th overall picks in consecutive drafts. Let's jump in and see what we see. Okay, we, we I'm starting, I skipped the eight seconds and there's an icing or something like that. It doesn't really matter. So let, let's watch here. He's got to come up on the boards because he's a left winger. He's not a center. Okay, so it's really finite, but let's just start amassing clues. A truly dynamic player moves his feet to go back for this puck with the intention of keeping it. This is a, just a weight shift, a weight slide, and there's no stick handle. So you have two uh, unflavored elements here, so to speak. You don't get foot movement. You don't get hand movement. So we're just going to try to whisk this puck on the fly out of the zone for an icing. And, and I'm not saying don't get it out or you have to make a play there, but it's just just little clues and we'll see if they go anywhere. I, both the people that watched the Yaroslav Brzgalov video might note I really warmed up to him after a few shifts. Let's see if that's the case here. Now, this puck listlessly does not get out. So play is going to continue, and now we're going to get a second chance. And this is an even cleaner situation man-wise. It's a little more dicey because of the pace and trajectory of the puck. Let's see how he handles this one. Okay, maybe stop. Maybe don't do that. Maybe surround your uh, surround the puck with your hips and make a handle and then glass an out if you really want to glass an out. Or maybe it's a head fake and a stick handle fake to the front skate and then turn it back to your D or turn yourself back. We're not two minutes into a shift in triple overtime. We are 27 seconds into a game that had a stoppage 19 seconds ago. Why are we already panic hacking at the puck? All right, coming off the bench into a passive forecheck. A little bit heavy on the feet. It still looks like here. We, we got to track that. Okay, now we, we, we have a puck that he really wants. Toes turned, attack heels. That's a key to deceptive maneuvering. That's good. It's a shame that player six was so determined to have that exact lane the whole time. If he reads off McGorty and widens out, they would have beaten Levshin off too here because he's a sucker for isolation plays like this. Instead, six finds the floor and nothing happens. But that, it showed a little bit of promise, little clues, right? Little clues that we amass along the way. They tag up. And now we're going to have a play on the wall. And it's easy to look at this from above and go, oh, how come he's not shutting off the boards there and all this? Now, you don't have to be a hero. You're, you're among the first two Fs on this four check. Just make the game predictable for the next guy in line. Play it inside out. This is good. And he's rewarded with a biscuit. Now, okay, this doesn't quite work like he wants it to, but conceptually that's right. And then he's going to re-salvage it. And he's going to salvage the safety pass here. And that's good, too. Just find some open ice. That This is this is a good shift. Okay, a little defensive zone play here. A little, little bit of jam just out of the frame, shoving the point man. Some folks will, will like that. He's back into the play now, sagging weak side winger. Now the strong side. He, he tries something of a hook pass to get this out. Conceptually, I, I kind of like it. I'd classify this as technical experimentation as opposed to something I don't like. Uh, even though it fails, it's not the same style of failure as the other ones. Alright. Some some folks have him as a center. He, he hasn't played center steadily in my notes since he was 15. So it's not like he's startled by the boards or anything. I'm not sure what's happening. Alright, so spatial awareness and all that. He, he, he's not a small dude. Frank Nazar has clear intentions to pass this puck. We have a chance to position ourselves better here and disable the hands of the back-checking defenseman all in one motion. This is Levshinov, so it's not even like a guy that is good defensively. So there's a chance to take advantage of that space. And he just he just doesn't do it. What's interesting is that, that Levshinov defends McGordy's stick blade only, and, and when the puck isn't out in front of McGordy's blade, he actually catches it underneath Levshinov's reach. But he's yielded all his leverage already, so it doesn't matter. Uh, the faster, more athletic Levshinov eats this as a snack. Uh, puck goes back the other way, and he throws a little frustration bump at 28, and off he goes. Short sequence here, but this is a little interesting. Remember how he rushed it early on? Here he's going to show some patience and poise, and he's going to take some ice, and he's going to rev it up. Oof. All right. Well, he's, he's still not very fast or agile, which has kind of been the read on him for a while. The next shift is more ping-pong-ish than anything. I, I think we can pretty safely say that we don't have a great skater on our hands here. I also don't think we're dealing with 
high-end hockey IQ. He's not dumb, I don't I don't think. But we're not talking about a next-level thinker or next-level playmaker, it doesn't look like. So let's say the hockey sense is average or a little above, and then the feet are below that. That's going to be tough to make the show unless there's some standout quality, right? Like some superstar-type quality that's, that's just elite and it breaks the scale. I don't think we have that. So unless something super terrific happened over the summer, which is possible... I'm thinking this is not a player on the roster to start the year, or maybe the whole year. And I think the AHL just makes a lot more sense for him anyhow. Adjust to the speed of the pro game. Um, play on probably a worse roster than you were dealing with for the last couple of years with Michigan and the program, right? With all due respect, that, you know, the prospects aren't exactly Pittsburgh's strong suit. So you fix him up with a playmaker like Ponomarayev, get his feet good, and then get, I don't think his body's physically ready for an NHL role, right? Like, it's not like he's going to be playing top six minutes or anything like that. You put him with someone like Paul Mariah that can get him the puck, and you see where it goes. All right, power play shift. Uh, four on three at that, so there's, so there's ice. So this is good from an experimentation point of view, too. The next iteration, though, right, we're talking about growing as a prospect. The next iteration is doing it when you know someone can and will attack you. Sparty has three guys on the rink. It's it's tough to go out to the blue line, right? It, it, that's not to take away from the action. It's a skill play that uses his frame. That's good. But I want to see that level of poise and that spatial awareness with four or, or dare I say five guys out there. Let's see if we can find a chance for that later on. I, I, I don't know if you guys are noticing this. I, I wrote in my notes in his draft year, he's not all that dangerous in one-on-one -on -one situations. In combination with his heavy feet, his hands aren't super quick. The heel of his blade comes off the ice quite a bit in the process. He's just not a dynamic stick handler. Watch him now work in this power play. Look, I don't need Nathan McKinnon, Tasmanian devil, screw yourself into the ice hands. That's unnecessary. He's an overhandler. But he's, he's sort of pushing this puck along fairly often, and that just doesn't make D-men freeze at all. Also, if you notice, when you don't stick hand a little bit, your passes aren't that good. Right, you need that stick handle. You put the puck in the stick handling puts it in a place in within the frame of your body to make a better play with it. You noticed on the first two when he cleared it, he never stick handled it. Both those pucks would have gotten out on the first shift if he stick handled it. It's really hard. It's a little thing. It just needs one, but it's just something. And look, we can kind of sort kind of sort of take an aspect of the skating here. There's a lot of noise up here. He's a busy body, a, a busy upper body that saps that saps from your output when you're when you're jostling back and forth up top like that. I'll see if we can get a better view of that later, but that's usually a core strength thing. And look, not to belabor the point, but look here on this retrieval, no stick handle. That's a push. It's a push to a pass. Right? Like, what first-round picks aren't stick-handling the puck at 20 years old, right? And I'm not saying he doesn't ever do it. I'm just saying it's just there's so few in his game. It At some point or another, it's going to take away from your deceptive qualities and your technical upside. And it, it's not just to look pretty. It's if you're not going to be fast and agile, like, how are you going to make space for yourself, right? If you can't freeze the defender to, to get some body positioning and some leverage on them, because you don't have great hands, it's, it's going to be a little bit tough. And then another thing, too, I, I don't know where I saw it, but somebody was, had him pegged as a playmaking center. Look, if you're going to describe a guy in two or three words, they got to all be right. You know, like it, he's a shooting winger. Um, he led the team in shots and I believe shot attempts last year. And then even as a freshman, despite playing much less time with guys that primarily shoot Adam Fantilli big shooter Luke Hughes big shooter he still was up there in shots on this team like he's a he's a shooter through and through um, if the playmaking comes around that would be great but that's not a primary portion of his game in my experience in his draft year I had labeled him as a raw prospect but not in the way that you traditionally would would say so uh, which is normally on the physical development arc where a player had a growth spurt and you know, he has no control over his limbs for whatever reason until he grows into it and learns how to use them. With McGrordy, it's more, it's technical, right? We talked about the stick handling aspects and, and even some of the playmaking process. Shot is really good, even at off balance. But 
for for McGordy, you look at the the skating and catching a pass with his weight centered on his skates as opposed to being up on his toes. Here's here's a kind of a good look here at just his skating posture. You see that that really hunched over stride, like his shoulders are way out in front of him, which is just not conducive to, to being very fast or being very fluid. It also hurts your puck reception ability. Usually when you're hunched over like that, that's a sign that there's a lacking of core strength and maybe back strength in there. So that's fixable. I, I suppose it's not structural, but it's just, you know, we're two years down the line and there, you see aspects of some of the same stuff that made me question if this was a first round pick to begin with. Now, this sounds like I'm pretty down on him, and I guess relative to the rest of the world, that's where I've been. When I saw him at 15 years old, I thought this is a potential top 15 pick, but that's that's a high-level look at a much lower level. When I when I dug in, I saw some potential, no doubt, and but definitely some flaws, and a lot of things that are actually correctable, uh, as opposed to what my comment section says, which is that everything is is just a coach away no matter what. There's correctable things. I wish I saw a little bit more correction at this point, so I'm a little worried there. But I definitely see some. Um, I had him originally as more of a mid to late second round pick. Um, he's probably improved upon that outlook a bit. That said, I don't think the trade is a loss for Pittsburgh either. Braden Yeager, who I also I don't really think he was a first round pick, also lacks first, first step quickness. He lacks twitch muscle activation in general in my opinion and also not a genius he has a plus or plus plus shot uh no question about that i, I think there's just more of a chance for mcgordy to have a b game if he's not scoring because he has some size and some jam while jaeger wasn't my territory when i went back and watched him as a penguins fan he just just didn't jump off the page of the first round type talent for me either good second rounder a, a good guy to take a chance on no question and and he might become you know maybe he's future jared mccann where he, he scores on teams that are you know not contenders um so i i'm a harder grader than most i, I don't think there's 32 a players around that is players worthy of a first round pick you know across the ushl ncaa and prep i only threw a draftable grade on like 25 ish guys for 2024 all told and that's just where I'm at in the process. It's not like there's, it's not like there's open spots for players to fill in in the NHL. You have to be better than a guy that's been in the league yesterday. So you need at least a hook that will convince me there's NHL upside. So I skew a bit down on the whole, but I'm much higher on dynamic skill sets than the rest. But anyway, that's that's a far cry from what we're talking about with Rucker McGroarty, who you know I think will eventually work himself into being a player. We got a number of power play shifts in this, and you know, it's not a killer, right? But he's not a huge part of the breakout process. He's more of the kickout guy, which is fine. I mean, not everybody has to be part of that. Michigan's got a lot of talent. Uh, but even if you look here, watch a little bit of stick handling, right? But if what do you notice? He's sitting back on his heels. He's rocked back on his heels a bit. It's not with an attack mindset. And granted, they're setting up a play where they're going to try to uh, two touch it to the slot. Uh, to the bumper guy, which and he was the bumper for a, a while at the program, and that's that's fine. But that's the thing is just like where where is this guy gonna buy milliseconds back from if he's not quick and he doesn't have quick hands or even doesn't even favor towards stick handling? How is he gonna make this space for himself? Is one of the things that I I'd like to see him work on, just taking space, taking milliseconds back from weaker players. So. With that said, I, I, there, I don't see any reason to force feed him into the NHL, uh, especially opening night. So that's what we got on Rucker McGordy. Uh, still one of the Penguins' best prospects, no matter how you slice it right now. And uh, that's where we're at. So thanks for joining me on the two-line pass. Till next time.